These details are not insignificant because how Daniel responds to the vision and its interpretation is also how we, at least in part, are to respond to this vision and dream as well. And so this chapter as a whole, and then the rest of the book of Daniel, from chapter 7 through verse 12, is a certain kind of writing that scholars have called apocalyptic, which comes from the, the Greek word for uh, revealing or appearing. And it typically, this, this genre, this type of writing, has to do with the end times and how God brings a dramatic conclusion to history as we know it. And this kind of writing does not aim to make specific, detailed prophecies about the future as much as to provoke powerful feelings. That's why it's so image heavy. That's why Daniel 7 has so many images. Images communicate truths, but often not truth with precision. The point is not to give specifics about the identities of the beasts in history, but to look for single, often simple meanings to give God's people hope and confidence in Him in difficult times. These prophecies are not meant to turn readers into investigators, not mainly meant to have us draw charts, but mainly to inspire faith, inspire hope, inspire worship in us, to help us live in our present moment with its distresses, and then to instill confidence in us, in our God, for however he brings about this vision into its specifics as the future unfolds. So these images are designed to affect us, like they did for Daniel. And before we walk through the dream, perhaps there's just one more thing to say about the nature of the vision. Verses 1 and 2 tell us that this came to Daniel as he slept. This is a dream. And then three times in the chapter, Daniel reminds us, it was at night. <laughs> it was at night. Verses 2, verses 7, verses 13. He wants to make sure we get the point. This is a dream. <laughs> this is not a specific script. This is not precise script. This is a distant prophetic glimpse, as if glimpsing in the dark. Shadowy as it is, though, Daniel wrote down the sum of what he saw, and it has consoled and inspired God's people now for 2,500 years. And it meets us today as a church in 2020, in the pandemic, with precious hope in the surpassing power of God. This vision in Daniel 7 has not yet been fully fulfilled, even though, as we'll see, there are significant parts of it that have come into glorious fulfillment that we see as Christians. So while we may not be given specific details here, we are given a certain hope, beginning right where we live in 2020 in our times of anxiety and alarm.